everybody, it's Shay here with Stacy and Alden. She's here to tell us about the 1802 Charter Document. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Shay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? That's good. Could you tell us what you do here in Alden? Yeah, so I'm the Digital Projects Librarian for Arts and I Archives. I've been here since last August. Uh, so basically what my job is, is I try to find materials in our special collections that would be good for digitization and putting online. Um, so it's basically just about getting as much of our rare and unique materials online as possible. Awesome, that sounds great. Um, so can you describe the project to highlight items from the Mon Center? Yeah, so this is kind of a new thing we're working on, um, our highlights feature, where we're trying to, it's mo mostly focusing on things that have been recently digitized, mm -hmm. um, so really trying to promote our things that are available online now. Um, but it's not limited to just that. It's basically about finding the things that are the coolest to us in mm -hmm. archives and promoting them online just so everyone knows you know about our little hidden treasures here awesome. yeah so could you tell us about the 1802 charter yeah so that's our first highlight is about the 1802 charter which i can show you in person this is it cool. um so basically what this was it was a precursor to the actual founding document of ohio university which was the 1804 charter in 1802, um, Manasseh Cutler, who's one of the founders of the university um, and part of the Ohio Company, wrote an act um, which he submitted to the state le legislature, which would establish a university in Athens. Um, and so this act, it did get passed, um, and it was for a university called American Western University, um, or Amer American West University, or even just American University. They played with the name a lot. Um, but basically, that university was established, but never became anything. They didn't do anything about it. Um, so the this document became sort of the the founding, not founding, the document that they pulled from when they wrote the 1804 charter that actually was for OU. <clears throat> so how was it physically made? Can we see it again? Yeah. Um, so you can see it's handwritten and cursive on um, paper. Um, and they were, you can see the holes actually where they were sewn together probably you can't see them but there's like little holes there and you can see it really well online um, and so they hand wrote down one side and then on the back side if you can see that it starts at the bottom mm -hmm. and then goes up um, and then they were all sewn together and taken to the state legislature and then the last two pages of the document are actually the amendments that the legislature wrote um, and attached to it um, for it to be accepted. So how do you guys preserve this? Yeah, uh, yeah so the thing with paper, um, paper can actually, actually last a really, really long time, hundreds of years easily. Um, so the most important things you have to do is keep it dry. Um, mold is a big problem with paper and you want to keep it out of UV light as much as possible. What's uh, that? Um, like from the sun, like UV rays. Oh. Yeah, uh, so you don't want too much light on the paper. Um, so what we do is we have a vault here in the Mon Center where all of our archival materials and rare books are. And we keep them in acid-free folders and in acid-free boxes and they stay on shelves and we can control the humidity and temperature back there. Um, so it's basically just to keep cool. anything dangerous away from, yeah. Are like students allowed back there? How could someone see this? Um, so, online? well no, you, could, you can come and request items in the Mon Center, mm -hmm. Mon Center and see them in person. Um, but you can't go back in the vault in the stack. So we would go and pull that for you and bring it back out here. Yeah, you have to have a code to, to be able to get in the back back there. Okay. And how would you say, how can we access this kind of like information and documents like in the, in the future? Like? Um, well, hopefully online. More and more of them will be online. Um, but I mean, so it's kind of a two-pronged <coughs> thing. We want them to be available online in the future. Um, but we also want to keep the physical objects safe too, so that they're always um, accessible. But it is, you know, the case sometimes there are some things that get too fragile um, for that. So like this is in pretty good shape, even mm -hmm. though the paper is really old. Um, so we could let people handle that. But sometimes newspapers and stuff like that get really, really fragile. That paper is really acidic. Um, and so I have worked with collections where, you know, the newspapers get digitized and then you access them online and we don't let anyone look at the physical mm -hmm. items anymore because they're too fragile. Um, so it, it can kind of depend, but the goal is for both online and the real version to be accessible. But it's not online yet? Or this is online. Oh, yeah, okay, this okay. is totally online. Uh, people can go and see it and look at it online. There's also a transcript with it. 
um, online, so this is, you know, cursive handwriting, and I think it's pretty good, but I read cursive handwriting a lot, um, so if you're not comfortable with that, it might be a little tough. Um, so if you look at it online, there are the transcripts there, so you can read those if you're in trouble exactly. with the cursive. Yeah. Where exactly online? Where exactly? So if you go to the the main library's website, mm -hmm. and then you go to the Archives and Special Collections uh, site, and then there's archives highlights below that. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Um, a quick question: Who actually wrote that? Do you know? Um, so Manasseh Cutler, who's one of the founders, is the person who submitted it to okay. the legislature. So we're pretty sure that this is his. I think he signed it at the end, but that, I might be wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. Um, I learned cursive like in elementary school, but it's, that looks like Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there are some differences, which this is not going to show up if I mm -hmm. try to show people. But um, like there, sometimes when there'd be a double S, one of the S's is really long and like looks more like an F, mm -hmm. um, which makes it hard to read. So there are differences in how people wrote cursive then to now. And I know like a lot of people I don't think in school are even taught cursive now. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it can be kind of tough to read. Of the things we have, this is not one of the toughest, but um, yeah, it is still a little hard. Cool. Well, thank you for the information. Where can the audience find you if they want to get more information about this? Uh, I mean, I'm uh, on the fifth floor in the Mon Center. Awesome. Um, pretty much any time. Um, and then you could always email me, too. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. If you have any questions, just drop it in the comment box below, or you can come visit Stacy yourself. Mm -hmm.